Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to be checking out Quadra from UVI. It's just been released. It's their brand new instrument. Now Quadra is pretty interesting. It takes some of my favorite features inside of Falcon, namely like the Euclidean sequencer and some of the appreciator functions, kind of wraps them up into a four part instrument. And it focuses on sort of muted uh, sounds. You've got quite a wide range of um, guitars, everything to electronic sounds, little plucks, etc. And it kind of throws them all together into this magical wash of um, sequences that you can play around with. Uh, now, I actually had the pleasure of contributing some of the patches to this library. Uh, we'll take a listen to one or two of those and then I'm actually going to, instead of running through these sounds, we're going to dive in and actually create something from scratch. I'll show you my process for building a preset inside of Quadra. Let's dive in, we're going to check this out. Right, so here we go guys, uh, this is Quadra, I've got it loaded up in Falcon, of course this does run inside of UVI Workstation as well, so if you don't have Falcon you can still use this as a standalone instrument. Um, I'm going to play two sounds that I did for this, uh, two of the presets, just two different examples, one a sort of very organic and uh, realistic sounding patch uh, using guitar sounds and another one using electronic sounds, something completely different. So they're both kind of arpeggiator patches, these, so you can kind of play them uh, holding down chords. And let's take a listen to this. This is Kelp Forest. Take a listen to something completely different. Uh, this one is called Analog Bubble Bath and just uses uh, electronic sound sources along with the same appreciators that we're using inside of Quadra. And take a listen to what this sounds like. Cool, so there you have it. It's a fairly simple patch, this, just two uh, muted source samples. Um, but obviously the appreciators can get incredibly complex and give you some really, really interesting movement in your patches. So rather than what I normally do uh, when I do these kind of reviews uh, and go through the sound sources and kind of run you through all the controls and stuff, I think what I'm going to do is instead just start a patch from scratch. I'll kind of just walk you through the process of building something new and explain as much as I can along the way uh, and we'll see what we come up with. So I'm just going to choose the init basic no op and that'll just give you this. We've got one part currently active. Uh, if we click on A, this will bring up the controls for the sound. So you've got the sound source and the op controls for each of these parts. Uh, and then also, as you hopefully noticed, you've got some global controls here. You can blend between all of them. Uh, you've got global intensity, uh, which can be mapped to MIDI controls. Um, and it just gives you a lot of expression over this uh, for the dynamics and the curves as well. And you've got some global reverb sends and delays here. You can edit these inside of these sound pages as well. So let's jump in here and we're going to take a look. Uh, so we'll kind of do sort of like a guitar sequence kind of thing using various different guitar tones once again. We might throw in some other stuff like pianos as well. We'll see what we come up with. Uh, I'm going to use this as a sort of base um, for the uh, riff that we're going to create out of this. It can get complex very, very quickly. So you want to kind of be quite uh, calculating as to what you're doing. Um, of course, you can just experiment as well. But uh, with all the randomization features, uh, using all four parts can get very, very overwhelming quite quickly. So what I like to do is to kind of start off with something as a sort of base for the sound. Uh, we're going to do a sort of sequence with the Strat sound that we currently have or perhaps maybe change it up into a bass sound. Um, but let's just get something going here. We've turned on our ARP now. Now notice this is in phrase mode now. So phrase mode will not allow you to play um, 
chords. Hold, holding down chords, it's just going to play the bass note. So if you've got Falcon, a lot of this will be quite familiar to you. A lot of this is taken from the ARP script that was introduced recently. Um, all of this stuff can be randomized, which is really nice. Uh, you've got different types for each of these. You can have harmonized chords in there. Uh, chords, which uh, in the case of the phrase mode, if you insert a chord there and hold down the chord, it will actually play the chords that you're holding down. Uh, we'll just go back to single and any of these can be initialized here and they can also have a global setting as well. So as played, but it'll set all of them to chords, for example. Um, but we're just going to keep this initialized again. So just playing one note, let's initialize the holds for those. And let's randomize our velocities. That's not too bad. Might play around with randomizing the gates as well. And what I'm going to do here, we're going to leave the scroll and link on. And I'm actually going to dial these steps up to 32. And then turn the link off. We'll go to number two. Let's scroll off as well. And then I'm going to just add in a repeat on the last one. There we go. So that's going to kind of be our, I think also on the last one, it's just maybe, maybe I should change that to there. That's better. Um, that's going to be kind of our bass note. Now we can actually blend this pattern that we have with the Euclidean uh, sequencer as well. Uh, and this gives you some really interesting uh, rhythms as well. So we'll keep that down at zero now. Uh, let's put in uh, let's put in sort of an even number seven hits inside of a sixteen step sequence. Well, let's change that up even more. We'll make it quite uh, different because we've got a thirty two step pattern. We'll go with a 13, uh, 13 step Euclidean sequence with five hits in there. It'll space them out evenly in there. Uh, we can have it jump an octave as well in places and the velocity, which is gonna be the accents uh, on that. So let's just dial this in, take a listen to what happens. Kind of a uh, year kind of blending those two um patterns together now which can be really interesting to just make things sound a little bit more organic and uh really kind of get something unique out of these patterns so you can hear that octave uh the higher note playing up there that's coming from our euclidean sequencer so we've got our kind of bass note let's start adding in some other tones on top of that so we're going to bring in b and let's look for a sound here. We can mute that one quickly and just take, listen to what we got. Let's keep that quite muted. We will just change the color just to. And let's set this to alternate. Maybe bring the spread down to about 80%. So each other notes is going to play in the left and on the right speaker accordingly. Um, we're going to take this up an octave. Uh, so we've got the drive turned on here, which is on the expression currently set to velocity. So more velocity equals more drive. You can also set that to the wheel, for example. So we have the vibrator turned on there as well. I'm going to turn those off for now. Uh, you've also got static effects here, like the frequency shifter, for example. Gives you kind of ring modi effects down, uh, down low. Um, it's quite nice, actually, for adding a little bit of shine to, to the sounds as well. Uh, wave shapers, for example, distortion. 
leave that off for now. I'm more interested in just getting some uh, ARP stuff overlaid over the top. So this one I'm going to now set to an appreciator instead. Uh, so this is obviously going to take an input from all the notes that we're currently playing. Let's turn that on. And just for the sake of doing this quite quickly, I'm once again just going to randomize these. notice that it's actually following the chords it's tracking the chords as well and you can quantize these scales accordingly down here if you turn this on uh, you won't need it if you are playing these appreciated ones and you know what you're playing but sometimes you may have different pitches in here uh, which pertain to a major scale for example if you have the scale quantizer on it'll actually when you're playing a minor scale it will quantize those pitches accordingly And what I'm going to do here now is kind of get a bit of a polyrhythmic vibe going. So we're going to actually reduce the steps to, let's say, nine, for example. And I'm actually going to bring, we're going to just experiment with uh, trying out a completely different time signature. So we're working in sixteenths uh, for the A part. I'm now on 16th dotted notes. We'll just see if that works. Sometimes you get lucky and you get these really, really interesting um, patterns that are completely in different time signatures altogether. You might try go to 8th dotted. There we go. So to make this one stand out a little bit more, bring the level of that one up and bring down A slightly. And also because it's a little bit more sparse now, I'm gonna bring up the reverb on the second part. So that's sounding pretty interesting now. Uh, I want to bring in another part on top of that, something quite a bit brighter and also quite sparse. Uh, let's go for something different. We'll grab maybe some sort of piano tones for this. I'll look at the piano harmonics for this. I'm going to bring that right up as well. So notice without the op, it plays like a normal instrument over the top. on for this as well i'm going to slow this one right down as well and let's just get slightly more sparse notes playing here might set a repeat for one or two of these i'm going to wash this on out completely as well with effects That's something pretty interesting as well. Um, lastly, I wouldn't always use all four of them, but in this case, I'm going to kind of get something a little bit rhythmical going here as well. Uh, let's choose something like the, of course, you can actually use the presets here if you want to just quickly get ideas. Um, but I'm going to use something from the synthetic section. We're going to go to analog and look at the noise elements. This is solo, this one. Turn off the tremolo. So we're in a pregetor mode right now. I want to just do and we've got the Euclidean on as well.
quite a little, like a little bit of that emphasis in there as well. Check out. Let's check out with all of those together. Just try and see what happens if we kind of add quite a bit of distortion to this uh, sound as well. And let's use the filter as well. We have a drive on the filter as well if you don't want to use the wave shaper. And play some chords. So there you have it. Things are coming together. Uh, now, obviously, this is just very quick messing around. Um, what we can do from here is we can actually play around with the sound sources as well. Let's just maybe change this to something synthetic again. We'll go with analog. Uh, so you can really kind of experiment very quickly with different ideas. quite like that bass note with the saw wave. Uh, we'll maybe try something different here too. Let's go with maybe something from the world section or actually the classical strings go the harp harmonics. <laughs> Let's check out the effects section as well. So now we can kind of finish off what we would be working on. Um, you've got all your delay controls in here. We may actually just change this up to an eighth dotted note, for example. And maybe cut out some more of the lows. And we'll take the highs up. Let's just make our reverb a bit bigger, a bit more decay, a bit more modulation. Uh, we've got the drive section. I'm actually not going to drive that. Uh, we can run our compressor over this. <laughs> Dial up the maximizer to just kind of bring everything together. Some really interesting patterns that you get out of this. It's a great tool to just experiment with, and kind of, you kind of come up with um, rhythms that you normally wouldn't just by playing. Uh, I love combining multiple appreciators together uh, to kind of get these interesting rhythms, especially when you start messing around with the time signatures and Euclidean rhythms and polyrhythmic elements as well. So just to kind of finish off, I'll just kind of play you one or two of the other ones. Uh, these are some of the ones from Simon Stockhausen as well. Just to kind of show you some of the range that you can get out of this. a number of bass samples in here there's some that i did for the bass ones with, with triplets so 
some more electronic bass sounds as well. So this one I did, Maui uh, combines sort of a, an appreciated part with a uh, part that's just played as an instrument. You'll see A is turned off. Let's bring in the appreciated section as well now. Electronic category. Cool, so there you have it. That is Quadra from UVI. I do really love this instrument. It's, it's very unique. I haven't come across anything quite like this uh, before. Um, I think particularly for sort of film composers creating beds for film uh, scores this is just uh it's got a real sort of organic feel to it which i really really like and then obviously just um experimenting with different rhythms uh, and using the if you're an electronic musician as well you get some great uh, little ideas and rhythmic elements from combining some of the electronic sounds even the noise stuff you can get some great percussive kind of sounding stuff as well so yeah, very interesting little instrument this. I uh, highly recommend you go check this one out. It's just out now. It's Quadra from UVI. Uh, I believe it's currently on an intro price of 99 and then up to 149 when it's uh, fully released. So once again, as usual, if you guys are enjoying the content, please make sure you hit the like button, subscribe and all that jazz. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll catch you soon right here at Marilla Music. Cheers.